Vittle point of view, the teenage Vittle Satan would be humiliated by her older persona's pathetic, prolonged bouts of pitiful sobbing, she'd scream at me to grow a spine, and show Gohan exactly what happened to cheaters, but now I was a married woman nearing her mid-negative thirties, adult matters had to be settled peacefully without physical combat melodrama, like we all did many years ago, that didn't mean I'd be able to restrain myself from punching Gohan in the face if what his father claimed was true. Thinking of my husband sleeping with a younger woman was hard enough, but Bula, she was as beautiful as Bulma, had been at her age. Not a negative thing about her besides maybe her overwhelming personality. She and Gohan wouldn't look very well, but desperate times called for desperate measures. It would have made me feel less horrible if he had slept with Bulma instead. Then I could at least pass it off as a mistake. To be with Bula, he had to actively pursue her. Goku didn't say much while I wept into the pillow. Whenever I said I always had a hunch he was cheating, he'd just nod his head like I was a mental patient and run his fingertips down my side. I'd accused him of lying for the first hour or two until he gave me a list full of evidence. 1. Bulma knew, and that was why she pushed me to have an affair with Goku. 2. Gohan was uncomfortable being in the brief's house, or around Vegeta. 3. He'd told Piccolo and Goku overheard their conversation. You can't ask Piccolo, Goku said softly, wiping tears from my eyes. I didn't want to tell you, but you were being stubborn. And I really want us to do what we should. We are good for each other, and it was just weighing on me that you didn't know what happened. But don't feel bad. A lot of us do it. Saiyans aren't normally monogamous from what Vegeta tells me. He's strayed before. Those were random women. This was different. He put thought into it. He wanted her I want you. Please don't feel bad about yourself. You look perfect to me. And you look even younger now from us becoming mates. We can't be together forever, and neither of us has to feel sad or lonely again. Gohan might have school, but we could live off the land. Goku, I need to talk to my husband. Can you use instant transmission to bring me there? When he frowned deeply, I tenderly kissed the tip of his nose. Please, just for one more talk. I promise we can go swimming and spar afterwards if you want. Do you think that sounds fair, I guess? Go get dressed, and I'll meet you here. We detangled our limbs beneath the sheets, and I awkwardly climbed out of bed naked, shivering in the cool air. I could feel Goku's eyes following me as I pulled on my clothes, and prepared to confront my husband about his possible infidelity. It'd be so strange. He'd be asking who told me it in the first place, and it would be suspicious that I learned my information from Goku. Kami, it was so hard to think of looking him in the face. We were separated by an ocean. When I was dressed, and spritz myself down with body spray to cover Goku's scent and avoid Gahan's fury. I waited patiently for Goku to use his technique. He rose off the bed completely naked, and laughed when I squealed in embarrassment and hid my face. Even seeing my husband without clothes made me blush. A warm hand settled on my shoulder, and I felt us vanish from the room. Instant transmission brought us in a narrow, dark alley next to some overfilled garbage cans that reeked of weak old trash. I held my nose shut and grimaced as the sounds of a busy city reached my ears. Goku looked extremely unhappy being in the noisy place, and pointed out a huge building across the street to save himself from going out in the limelight. He'd grown up in the mountains, and lived his entire life there. The hustle and bustle of city life was overwhelming. I'll wait here for you to finish, Goku said, leaning against the alley's wall. He powered up to become a Super Saiyan 4, instantly garbing him in pants, and covering his upper body in velvety red fur. But if you don't come out in an hour, I'll have to come in after you well that's a little dramatic. If we're talking about Gohan cheating, it's going to take longer than an hour. Just come back in a few hours, okay why? She she only takes an hour to chew me out. What are you two going to be doing while I'm gone, we're married. Goku looked like he wanted to throw a tantrum, but turned his eyes away. I'm waiting here either way. If I sense your key increasing I'm coming in. There was no point in continuing to argue with him. I rolled my eyes and stepped out into the brilliant sunlight, squinting and trying to get my bearings. The traffic was so backed up I could easily cross to the other side of the street and rush inside the building. The air outside made my lungs feel heavy. Breathing was nearly impossible from all the pollution. I pushed past a few men and women in business suits, feeling terribly underdressed for my visit, and rushed to the front desk. A woman with a Bluetooth in her ear was typing away on a keyboard, attempting to look very important. Her eyes flickered up to see me, and she pointed a finger toward the elevator without speaking a word. It seemed like blatant rudeness to me until I noticed she had pointed ears. She was probably some type of alien, and knew who I wanted to see before I even asked. The perfect secretary. I made my way to the elevator, 
and realized I was shaking when the door shut in front of me. If Gohan really had been unfaithful, the answering conversation would be much harder than I thought. Part of me hoped Goku had invented the whole story to drive me closer to him. It'd be easier to scream at him for being manipulative than address the issues causing cracks in my marriage. Bula of all people. I'd prefer he repeatedly cheated with random women than doing it once with a girl who we had seen raised from birth. She and Pan were best friends. The motion stopped and both doors opened wide, showing another wide plain room. There were doors lining the hall, suggesting it was a floor for the people at the convention to retire at the end of the day. I walked down the hallway, until I found a room labeled Sun Gohan. My heart was beating so fast I worried it would beat right out of my chest. He wasn't there, probably working to care for Pan, and I when he came home in a few days. Was I really going to have this conversation with him? Before I could run over the argument in my head again to make sure I didn't mess up, the door flew open and Gohan was standing in front of me. His glasses weren't on and his hair was tousled, telling me he hadn't had a meeting yet. His eyebrows raised in shock when he saw me, but it quickly turned to joy. I squeaked like a chew toy when he scooped me up and swung me around. Cammy, why did he have to do this to me? Things were already hard enough. Videl, you're all better, Gohan said, planting a kiss on my forehead. He switched his grasp so I was laying bridal style in his arms. Why the visit? Is something wrong at home? Yes. Put me down so we can talk. My husband furrowed his brow, but obeyed, and placed me gently on the floor then gestured for me to come inside. It was getting harder to breathe. He shut the door behind us, and we walked through the lavish room to his bedroom, where a huge bed with a white canopy took center stage. Gohan sat down on it and I took a seat next to him, twiddling my thumbs. I had to be brave. If he had cheated on me with Bula, I couldn't disgrace myself by pretending it never happened. If this is about me leaving after you got in the accident, I'm sorry, did you sleep with Bula? Gohan's mouth hung open in slack-jawed shock. I tried to keep my eyes level with his, and look intimidating, but it was so hard when he looked so bewildered. Goku must have lied. What was I thinking? Coming all the way to my husband's important week of work to accuse him of such things. He looked like a deer caught in headlights, not a guy trying to hide his infidelity. I had been unfaithful, and wanted to justify it somehow. Bula was nearly half his age, so it didn't make sense. I couldn't bear looking into his sad eyes. I'm sorry. Maybe I should go why would you ever think something like that? I don't know it's a very specific accusation. Who told you Vittle? Was it Bula herself, or maybe Pan? Gohan paused, and scowled deeply. Or was it Dad? Don't talk to him anymore. He's just trying to drive us apart. So you're positive you didn't do anything with Bula? He told me I could ask Piccolo, and he'd say the same thing. It's just kind of weird for him to invent a story like that. The longer you put off telling me the truth, the worse the end results will be there was a strained silence. I turned my eyes to the floor and prayed to Kami Gohan wasn't, speaking, because he was offended by my words. That was much easier to fix than him being with Bula. When I looked up to see what he was doing, he wound his fingers through my hair to pull my head to the side exposing my neck. It was a good thing Dend healed the marks, or we would have been arguing for much longer than an hour. Gohan tightened his grasp, making me wince in pain. My husband slowly lowered his lips to my throat, near the area Goku had bitten me. He kissed the spot a few times before inhaling deeply, trying to pick up his father's scent on my skin. I closed my eyes, and hoped he wouldn't notice it because I was doomed if he did. A few more tense moments passed, during which time his grasp began to loosen and free my hair. Just when I thought I was home free, and could slip away Gohan pushed me back on the bed, and straddled my hips. Fangs began to sprout from his mouth. I never wanted to do this Fidel, but if you're going to be paling around with Goku, I guess I'll have to. I'm not always going to be there to stop him from filling your head with lies, so maybe this will help. Something told me that mating twice was not a good idea. If Gohan sank his teeth into me Den couldn't heal it, because my husband would obviously now. It would permanently fuse his scent into me and drive Goku insane. What if he tried to bite me again, too? Kami, I was turning into a chew toy for the Saiyans. Gohan easily held my head to the side, and I felt his warm breath tickling my neck. He was panting, trying to control himself. I squeezed my eyes shut and waited, but no agonizing pain came. Gohan sat up, and I followed after, carefully rubbing my neck to make sure I hadn't missed anything. His teeth returned to normal, and he looked away ashamed. No I can't do that to you. It isn't fair. Please believe me, I would never be unfaithful and Piccolo will confirm that. Gohan, I'm sorry. It's okay you were worried. I would have been too he reached out to offer me a hug, 
and I gratefully fell into his arms, basking in my joy. When I come home, why don't we take the capsule Bulma gave us, and have a little vacation? I'm sure she won't mind watching Pan, I'd love that, 